In this video, we'll define parsing at a broad conceptual level with a few motivating examples. But first, why should we bother to learn about parsing at all? Well, even if you never write a compiler or an interpreter, at some point in every programmer's career, he or she needs to analyze HTML or XML or some other structured document format. And their first instinct is often to use what has never failed before, regular expressions. This tends to end poorly. In fact, this is the image that used to show up when you Googled for something like match HTML with regex. And if you haven't seen it, I certainly recommend checking out the famous reply on Stack Overflow that discusses the consequences of attempting to match HTML with regular expressions. And of course, if you do want to write a compiler or an interpreter, then you want to be using proper parsing techniques. As a matter of fact, in a compiler, parsing is usually the second phase after the lexer. The lexer converts a sequence of tokens into a sequence, a sequ sorry, a lexer converts a sequence of characters into a sequence of tokens, and the parser then converts that sequence of tokens into a tree, often called a parse tree, a syntax tree, or an abstract syntax tree. So what is parsing? Uh, I like to think of it in sort of general terms as a transformation from a sequence into a tree, or from unstructured data into, into structured data. For example, let's consider the lexing and parsing of these fragments of JavaScript. Lexical analysis will convert sequences of characters into sequence of tokens. Tokens are abstract lexical units like keywords, identifiers, and delimiters. And when conducting lexical analysis, it will ignore lexically irrelevant items like white space and comments, as it's done in this example right here. Parsing will convert the sequence of tokens into a tree, and in the process, discard syntactically irrelevant tokens. The irrelevant tokens are those that end up captured in the nesting structure of the tree itself such as parentheses, curly braces, and semicolons. So as you can see in this example, uh, we don't need these items anymore because they're, they're represented in the structure of the tree itself. And what we're left with is a parse tree. As another example of parsing, let's consider how the simple expression right here can be converted into a tree. And in the process, how parsing eliminates the need to retain parentheses because order of operation becomes embedded in the nesting structure of the tree. It's clear from the structure of the resulting tree that x plus 3 should be performed before multiplying by 10. So what is it that specifies the trees in the first place? How do we know that what the structure is supposed to be? The answer most of the time is some kind of context-free grammar, or perhaps a subtle variation on some context-free grammar. 